Cypher, Chokhmah, Sharume, also called the Wisdom of Solomon. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth, think of Yahuwah with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him, for he will be found of them that tempt him not, and shows himself unto such as do not distrust him. For forward thought separate from Elohim and his power, when it is tried, reproves the unwise. For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. For the Ruach HaKadosh of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide with unrighteousness comes in. For wisdom is a loving Ruach and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For Elohim is witness of his mind and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. For the Ruach, Yahuwah, fills the world, and that which contains all things has knowledge of the voice. Therefore, he that speaks unrighteous things cannot be hid, neither shall vengeance when it punishes pass by him. For inquisition shall be made unto the counsels of wicked men, and the sound of his word shall come unto Yahuwah, for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. For the ear of jealousy hears all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. Therefore, beware of murmurings, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belies slays the soul. Seek not death in the air of your life, and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. For Elohim made not death, neither has he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they might have their being, and their generations of the world are healthful, and there is no poison of destruction in them nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For the righteousness is immortal, but the wicked men with their works and the words call it to them. For they, for when they thought to have it their friend, they consume to not and cut a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. For the wicked said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright, our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from Sheol. For we are born at the adventure, and we shall be hereafter and as though we had never been. For the breath of our nostrils is as smoke, and a little spark in the moving of our heart which be extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes, and our ruach shall vanish as the soft air, and our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance, and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall disperse as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun, and overcome with the heat thereof, for our time is a very shadow that passes away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man comes again. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave to let us leave to, to tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion, and our lot is this. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor 
reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie in wait for righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraids us with our offending the Torah and objects to our infamy and transgressions of the education. He professes to have the knowledge of Elohim, and he calls himself the child of Yahuwah. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold, for he, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of other fashion. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstains from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and makes his boast that Elohim is his father. Let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of Elohim, he will help him and deliver him from the hands of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness was blinded them. As for the mysteries of Elohim, they knew not they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. For Elohim created man to be immortal and made him to be an image in his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of Elohim, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the universe they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery, and their going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastened, they shall be greatly rewarded, for Elohim proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace has he tried them, and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run and fro, run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and Yahuwah shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as to be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his Kodashim, and he has care for his elect. But the wicked shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken Yahuwah. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain their labors unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. Their women are foolish, and their children wicked. Their offspring is cursed. Wherefore, blessed is the barren that is undefiled, which has not known the sinful bed. She shall have fruit in the visitation of souls. And blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands has wrought no iniquity nor imagined wicked things against Elohim, for unto him shall be given the special gift of belief and inheritance in the temple of Yahuwah, more acceptable to his mind. For glorious is the fruit of labors, and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. As were the children of the breakers of wedlock, they shall not come to their perfection, and the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. For though they live long, yet shall they be nothing regarded, and their last age shall be without honor. Or if they die quickly, they have no hope, neither comfort in the day of trial. For horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. Better it is to have no children 
and have virtue, for memorial thereof is immortal, because it is known to Elohim and with men. When it is present, men take example at it, and when it is gone, they desire it. It wears a crown and triumphs forever, having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. But multiplying brood of the wicked shall not thrive, nor take deep root and from bastard's lips, nor lay any fast foundation. For though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standing not last, they shall be shaken with the wind, and through the force of the wind, they shall be rooted out. The imperfect branches shall be broken off, their fruit, their fruit unprofitable, not ripe to eat, yea, meat for nothing. For children forgotten of Torahless beds are witness of wickedness against their parents in their trial. But through the righteous be prevented with death, yet shall he be in rest, for honorable age is not that which stands in length of time, nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and of unspotted life is old age. He pleased Elohim and was beloved of him, so that living among sinners he was translated. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest the wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. For the bewitching of wickedness occur, occurs things that are honest and wandering of lustful desire undermines the simple mind. He, being made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time, for his soul pleased Yahuwah, Therefore, hast he to take him away from among the wicked. This the people saw and understood it not, neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with the Kodeshim, and that he has respected unto his chosen. Thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the wicked which are living, and youth that is soon perfected, the many years and old age of the unrighteousness, for they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understand what Elohim in his counsel has decreed of him. And to what end? Yahweh has set him in safety. They shall see him and despise him, but Elohim shall laugh them to scorn and they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. For he shall rend them and cast them down headlong that they shall be speechless and he shall shake them from the foundation and they shall be utterly laid waste and be in sorrow and their memorial shall perish. And when they cast up the accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear and their own iniquities shall convince them to their face. Then shall the righteous man stand in bold greatness before the face of such have been afflicted him and made no account of his labors. And when they see it, they shall be troubled with a terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of Yahshua so far beyond all that they looked for. And they, repenting and groaning for anguish of the Ruach, shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of Elohim and his lost is among the Kodeshim? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness has not shined unto us and the brilliance of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way, but as for the way of Yahuwah, we have not known it. What has pride profited us? Or what good has riches with our vaunting brought us? 
All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasten by and as a ship that passes over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the kneel in the water of the keel in the waves, or as when a bird has flown through the air, there is no sign of her way to be found, but the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion of them is passed through. Therein afterward no sign where she went is to be found. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it parts the air which immediately comes together again so that a man cannot know where it went through. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we are born, begin to draw to our end and had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. For the hope of the wicked is like dust that is blown away in the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like a smoke which is dispersed here, there with a tempest and passes away as the remembrance of a guest that tarries but a day. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with Yahuwah, and the care of them is with El Elyon. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from Yahuwah's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. He shall take them to him his jealousy for a complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. He shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of a helmet. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. His severe wrath shall be sharpened for a sword and the word shall fight with him against the unwise. And shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad, and from the clouds, as from a well-drawn bow, shall they fly into the mark. And hailstones full of wrath shall be cast out of a stone bow, and the water of the sea shall rave against them, and the flood shall cruelly drown them. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, and like a storm shall blow them away, Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill-dealing Ill shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. Hear therefore, O kings, and understand. Learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear ye what rule the people, and glory in the multitude of the nations. For power is given to you of Yahuwah and solventry from El Elyon, who shall try your works and search out your counsels, because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the Torah, nor walked after the counsel of, El of Elohim. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he which is Yahuwah over all shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he has made the small and the great and cares for all alike. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. For they that guard holiness purely shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore, set your affection upon the words. Desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is glorious and never fades away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. She prevents them from desire her and make herself first known unto them. Whoso seeks her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfect wisdom, 
and whoso watches for her shall quickly be without care. For she goes about seeking such as are worthy of her, shows herself favorably unto them in the ways and meets them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her Torah, and the giving heed unto her Torah is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption makes us near unto Elohim. Therefore, the desire of wisdom brings to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and sepulchres, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom, honor our wisdom, that ye may reign forevermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you, and I will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity and bring the knowledge of her into light and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and the wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive, therefore, instruction through my word, and it shall do you good. I myself am a mortal man like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air, and I fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothing, and that with cares. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life, and the light going out. Wherefore, I pray, an understanding was given to me. I called upon Elohim, and the Ruach Kochma came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is a little sand and silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that comes from her never goes out. All good things together came to me with her, and innumerable riches in her hands, and I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom goes before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them, I learned diligently to do to do communicate her liberal, liberally. I do not hide her riches, for she is a treasure unto men that never fails, which they used to become the friends of Elohim, being com commended for the gifts that come from learning. Elohim has granted me to speak as I would and to conceive as is meant for the things that are given to me, because it is he that leads unto wisdom and directs the wise. For in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also, and knowledge of workmanship. For he has given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements, the beginning, ending, and mist of times, the alterations of the turning of the sun and the changes of the season, the circuits of the years and the positions of the stars, the nature of living creatures and the furies of wild beasts and the violence of winds and the reasoning of men, the diversities of plants and the virtues of roots and all such things are as either secret or manifest them, I know. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me, for in her is an understanding ruach, holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, 
loving the things that is good quick, which cannot be leaded, ready to do good, kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care, having all power, overseeing all things, and going through all understanding, pure and most subtle, Rulakal. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of Elohim and a pure influence flowing from the glory of El Shaddai. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her, for she is the brightness of the everlasting life and the unspotted mirror of the power of Elohim and the image of his goodness and being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself. She makes all things new and in all things entering into holy souls. She makes them friends of Elohim and prophets for Elohim loves none but him that dwells in wisdom for she is more beautiful than the sun and above all, the order of the stars being compared with the light, she is found before it. For after this comes night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily, and sweetly she orders all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. I desired to make her my spouse, and I was a lover of her beauty, and that she is conversant with Elohim. She magnifies her nobility. Yea, Yahuwah of all things himself loved her, for she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of Elohim and the lover of his works. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that works all things? And if prudence work, who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtue, for she teaches temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude, which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. If a man desire much experience, she knows things of old and conjectures aright what is to come. She knows the subtleties of speech, and she can expound dark sentences. She foresees signs and wonders, and the events of seasons and time. Therefore, I propose to take her to me to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things and comfort and cares of grief. For her sake, I shall have estimation among the multitude and honor with the elders, though I be young. I should be bound of quick conceit and judgment and shall be admired in the sight of great men. And when I hold my tongue, they shall abide my leisure. And when I speak, they shall give good ear unto me. And if I talk much, they shall lay their hands upon their mouths. Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. I shall set the people in order, and the nation shall be sh subject unto me. Horrible tyrants shall be afraid when they do but hear of me. I shall be found good among the multitude and valiant in war. After I am come into my house, I will repose myself with her. For her conversation has no bitterness, and to live with her has no sorrow, but mirth and joy. Now, when I consider these things in myself, and ponder them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality and great pleasure. It is to have her friendship, and in her works of her hands are infinite riches, and in the exercise of conference with her prudence and in talking with her a good report i went about seeking how to take her to me for i was a witty child and i had a good ruach yea rather being good i came into the body undefiled nevertheless when i perceived that i could not otherwise obtain her except elohim gave her me 
and that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. I prayed unto Yahuwah and besought him, and with my whole heart I said, O Elohim of my fathers and Yahuwah of mercy, who have made all things with your word and ordained man through your wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which you have made, and order the world according to equity and righteousness, and execute judgment with an upright heart? Give me wisdom that sits by your throne, and reject me not from among your children. For I, your servant and son of your handmaid, am a feeble person, and of short time, and too young for the understanding of judgment and Torah. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet your wisdom be not with them, he shall be nothing regarded. You have chosen me to be a king of your people and a judge of your sons and daughters. You have commanded me to build a temple upon your holy mount and an altar in the city wherein you dwell, a resemblance of the holy tabernacle, which you have prepared from the beginning. And wisdom was with you, which knows your works and was present when you made the world and knew what was acceptable in your sight and right in your commandments. Oh, send her out of your holy heavens and from the throne of your glory, that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto you. For she knows and understands all things. And she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable. And then shall I judge your people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of Elohim? Or who can think what the will of Yahuwah is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth, the world's able to rule all things. But when the unrighteous went away, from and directed the course of righteousness towards his son. And when the wicked perished, she delivered the righteous man who fled from the heavens of those even the and a standing not believing soul. For with the hurt, the not were good, but also in the Received him in right paths, showed him the kingdom of Elohim, and gave him knowledge of the holy things, made him rich in his travels, and multiplied the fruit of his labors. In the covetousness of such as oppressed him, she stood by him and made him rich. She defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait, and in sore conflict she gave him the victory that he may know the goodness is stronger than all. When the righteous was sold, he forsook him not, but delivered him from sin. She went down with him into the pit and left him not in bonds until she brought him the sepulcher of the kingdom and power against those that oppressed him. As for them that had accused him, she showed them to be liars, and gave him perpetual glory. She delivered the righteous people and blameless seed from the nations that oppressed them. She entered into the soul of the servant of Yahuwah and withstood dreadful kings and wonders and signs, rendered to the righteous a reward of their labors, guided them in a marvelous way, and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water. But she drowned their enemies and cast them up out of the bottom of the deep. Therefore, the righteous spoiled the wicked and praised your holy name, O Yahuwah, 
and magnified with one accord your hand that fought for them, for wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb and made tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. She prospered their works in the hands of the holy prophet. They went through the wilderness that was not inhabited and pitched tents in places where they lay no way. They stood against their enemies and were avenged of their adversaries. For a double grief came from the for they were long before thrown out at the casting forth of the infants. Him in the end, when they saw the angel, therefore being deceived, and vile beast, you did send a multitude of unreasonable beasts upon them for vengeance. They have fallen to having made and wait, for you can show your great strength at all times when you face the powerful for all the and I would have made her but you spare all, for they are yours, O Yahuwah, lover of souls. For in is a little that offend and warn them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended and leaving their wicked. It will be doing most odious works of witchcraft and wicked sacrifices and also those merciless murders of children and devourers of man's flesh and the feast of blood with their priests out in the midst of their idolatrous crew and the parents that killed with their own hands souls destitute of help that the land which you esteem above all others might receive a worthy colony of Elohim's children. Nevertheless, even those you spared as men and did send wasps, forerunners of your host, to destroy them by little and little, not that you were unable to bring the wicked under the hand of the righteousness in battle or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts or with one rough word, but executing your judgment upon them by little and little, you gave them place of repentance not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation and that their malice was bred in them and that their cognition would never be changed. For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. Neither did you, for fear of any man, give them pardon for those things wherein they sin. For who shall say, what have you done? Or who shall withstand your judgment? Or who shall accuse you for the nations that perish, whom you made? Or who shall come to stand against you to be revenged for the unrighteous men? For neither is there any Elohim but you that cares for all, to whom you might show that your judgment is not unright. Neither shall king or tyrant be able to set his face against you for any whom you have punished, for so much then as you are righteous yourself, you order all things righteously, thinking it not agreeable with your power to condemn him that has not deserved to be punished. For your power is the beginning of righteousness, and because you are Yahuwah of all, it makes you to be gracious unto all. For when men will not believe what you are of a full power, you show your strength, and among them that know it, you make their boldness manifest, but you, mastering your power, judge with equity and order us with great favor, for you may use power when you will, but by such works have you taught your people that the just man should be merciful and have made your children to be of good hope that you give repentance for sin. For if you did punish the elements of your children and condemn to death with such deliberation, 
giving them time and peace whereby they might be delivered from their malice. With how great compensation did you judge your own sons and to the fathers you have sworn and made covenants of good promises? Therefore, whereas do you chasten us, you scourge your enemies a thousand times more to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of your goodness and when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. Wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely and unrighteously, you have tormented them with their own ab abominations, for they went astray very far in their ways of error and held them for Elohim, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised, being deceived as children of no understanding, Therefore, unto them, as to children, without the use of reason, you did send a judgment to mock them. But they that would not be reformed by the correction, wherein he dallied with them, shall feel a judgment worthy of Elohim. For look, for what things they grudged when they were punished, that is, for them whom they thought to be Elohim, now being punished in them, when they saw it, they acknowledged him to be the true Elohim, whom before they denied to know, and therefore came ex extreme damnation upon them. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of Elohim, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him, that is, neither by conser considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster, but deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violet waters or the lights of heaven to be the Elohim which govern the world, which with whose beauty, if they be delighted, look them into be. Elohim, let them know how much better Yahweh of them is, for the first author of beauty has created them. But if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. For by greatness and beauty of the creatures, proportionably the maker of them is seen, but yet for this they are the less to be blamed, for they perchance err, seeking Elohim, and desirous to find him, for being conversant in his works, they search him diligently and believe their sight, because the things are beautiful that are seen, howbeit neither are they to be pardoned. For if they were able to know so much that they could aim at the world, how did they not sooner find out Yahweh thereof? But miserable are they, and in dead things is their hope, who call them Elohim, which are the works of men's hands, gold and silver, to show art in and resemblances of beasts, or a stone good for nothing, the work of an ancient hand, now a carpenter that fells timber, after he has sawn down a tree, met for the purpose and taken off all the bark skillfully round about, and has wrought it handsomely, and made a vessel thereof fit for the service of man's life. And after spending the refuge, the refuge of his work to dress his meat, has filled himself, and taken the very refuge among those which serve to no use being a crooked piece of wood and full of knots has carved it diligently when he has nothing else to do and formed it by the skill of his understanding and fashioned it to the image of a man or made it like some vile beast laying over with vermilion and with paint coloring it red and covering every spot therein and when he had made a covenant room for it, set it in the wall, and made it fast with iron, for he provided for it that it might not fall, knowing that it was unable to help itself, for it is an image, 
and has need of help. Then makes his prayer for his goods, for his woman and children, and is not ashamed to speak to that which has no life. For health he calls upon that which is weak. For life he prays to that which is dead, and for aid humbly beseeches that which has least means to help. And for a good journey he asks of that which cannot set a foot forward. And for gaining and getting, and for good success in his hands, he asks ability to do him that is most unable to do anything. Again, one preparing himself to sail and about to pass through the raging waves calls upon a piece of wood more rotten than the vessel that carries him. For truly desire of gain devised that and the workman built it by his skill. But your providence, O Father, governs it. For you have made a way in the sea and a safe path in the waves, showing that you can save from all danger. Yea, though a man went to sea without art, nevertheless, you would not that the works of your wisdom be in idle, and therefore do men commit their lives to a small piece of wood and passing through the sea in a weak vessel are saved? For in the old time also, when the proud giants perished, the hope of the world governed by your hand escaped in a weak vessel and left to all ages a seed of generation. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness comes, but that which is made with hands is cursed as well it as, well it as he that made it, he because he made it, and it because being corruptible, it was called Halloween. For the wicked and his wickedness are both alike hateful unto Halloween. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. Therefore, even upon the idols of the other nations shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of Elohim they are become an abomination and a stumbling block to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he has made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as an Elohim, which was then a dead man, delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Thus, in process of time, a wicked custom growing was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of the kings, whom men could not honor in presence, because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his vestige from far, and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the in that by this, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent, as if he were present. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition, for he purchased, willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And so... The multitude, allured by grace of the work, took him now for an Elohim, which a little before was but honored. And that was an occasion to deceive the world, for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks an incommunicable name. But moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of Elohim, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. For while they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or made revealings of strange rites, they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. But either, but either one slew another treacherously 
or grieve them by breaking wedlock so that there reigned in all men without exception, blood, manslaughter, threat, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind, disorder in marriages, breaking wedlock and shameless uncleanliness, for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil. For either they are mad when they are to marry or prophesy lies or live unjustly or else lightly forswear themselves. For so much so as their trust is in idols which have no life, though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. How be it for both causes shall they be justly punished, both because they thought not well of Elohim, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness, for it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is just vengeance of sinners that punishes away the offense of the wicked. But you, O Elohim, are gracious and true, long-suffering and in mercy, ordering all things. For if we sin, we are yours, knowing your power. But if we will not sin, knowing that we are counted yours, for to know you is perfect righteousness, yea, to know your power is the root of immortality. For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with diverse colors, the painter's fruitless labor, the sight whereof it entices fools to lust after it, and so they desire the form of a dead image that has no breath. Both they that make them, they that desire them, and they that worship them are lovers of evil things and are worthy to have such things to trust upon. For the potter, tempering soft earth, fashions every vessel with much labor for our service. Yea, of the same clay he makes both the vessels that serve for clean uses, and likewise also all such as serve to the contrary. But what is the use of either sort? The potter himself is the judge, and employing his labors lewdly, he makes a vain Elohim of the same clay. Even he, which a little before was made of earth himself, and within a little while after re returns to the same, out when his life which was lent him shall be demanded. Notwithstanding his care is not that he shall have much labor, nor that his life is short, but strives to excel goldsmiths and silversmiths and endeavors to do like the workers in brass and counts it his glory to make counterfeit things. His heart is ashes, his hope is more vile than earth and his life of less value than clay. For so much as he knew not his maker and him that inspired unto him an active soul and breathed in a living ruach but they counted our life a pastime and our time here a market for gain. For, say they, we must be getting every way through it be by evil means. For this man that of earthly matter makes brittle vessels and graven image shows himself to offend above all others. And all enemies of your people that hold them in subjection are most foolish and are more miserable than very babes. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be Elohim, which neither have the use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear, nor fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. For man made them, and he that borrowed his own ruach fashioned them, but no man can make an Elohim like unto himself. For being mortal, he works a dead thing with wicked hands. For he himself is better than the things which he worships. Whereas he lives once, but they never. 
Yea, they worship those beasts also that are most hateful, for being compared together, some are worse than others. Neither are they beautiful, so much as to be desired in respect of beasts, but they with without the praise of Elohim and blessings. Therefore, by the like were they punished worthily, and by the multitude of beasts tormented, Instead of which punishment, dealing graciously with their own people, you prepared for them meat of strange taste, even quails to stir up their appetite, to the end that they, desiring food, might for the ugly sight of the beasts sent among them loathe even that which they must needs desire. But these sufferings, penjury for a short space, might be made partakers of strange taste, for it was requisite that upon them exercising tyranny should come tyranny, which they could not avoid, but to these it should only be showed how their enemies were tormented. For when the horrible fierceness of beasts came upon these, and they perished with the stings of crooked serpents, your wrath endured not forever. But they were troubled for a small season, that they might be admonished, having a sign of Yeshua, to put them in remembrance of the commandments of your Torah. For he that turned himself towards it was not saved by the things that he saw, but by you, that are the Savior of all. And in this you made your enemies confess that it is you who deliver from all evil, for them the bitings of grasshoppers and the flies killed, neither was there found any remedy for their life, for they were worthy to be punished by such. But your sons, not the very teeth of venomous dragons, overcame, for your mercy was ever by them and healed them. For they were pricked, and they should remember your words and were quickly saved that not falling into deep forgetfulness, they might be continuously mindful of your goodness. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but your word, O Yahuwah, which heals all things. For you have power of life and death. You lead to the gates of Sheol and bring up again. A man indeed kills through his malice and the Ruach, when it is gone forth, returns not, neither the soul receives upon, received up, comes again. But it is not possible to escape your hand. For the wicked that denied to know you were scourged by the strength of your arm with strange rains, hail, and showers were they persecuted, and they could not avoid, and through fire were they consumed for which is most to be wondered at. The fire had more force in the water that quenched all things, for the world fights for righteousness. For sometimes the, for some time the flame was mitigated, that it might not burn up the beasts that were sent against the wicked, but themselves might see and perceive that they were persecuted with the judgment of Elohim. And at another time, it burns even in the midst of the water, above the power of the fire, that it might destroy the fruits of the unjust land. Instead, thereof you fed your own people with angels' food, and did send them from heaven bread prepared without their labor, able to contend every man's delight, and agreeing to every taste. For your substance declared your sweetness unto the children, and serving to the appetites of the eater, tempered itself to every man's liking. But snow and ice endured the fire, and melted not, that they might know that fire burning in the hail and sparkling in the rain did destroy the fruits of the enemy. But this again did even forget his own strength, that the righteousness might be nourished. For the creature that serves you, who are the maker, who are the maker, increases his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment, 
and abates its strength for the belief of such as put their trust in you. Therefore, even then was it altered unto the fashions, and was obedient to your grace that nourishes all things according to the desire of them that had need, that your children, O Yahuwah, whom you love, might know that it is not the growing of the fruits that nourishes man, but that it is your word which preserves them and that puts their trust in you. For that which was not destroyed of the fire, being warmed with a little sunbeam, soon melted away, that it might be known that we must prevent the sun to give you thanks. And at the day spring, at the day spring pray unto you, for the hope of the unthankful shall melt away as the winter's hoarfrost, and shall run away as unprovable water. For great are your judgments, and cannot be expressed. Therefore, unnurtured souls have erred. For when unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation, they being shut up in their houses, the prisoners of darkness, and fettered with the bonds of a long night, lay there exiled from the external providence. For while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sin, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness being horribly astonished and troubled with strange apparitions, for neither might the corner that held them kept them from fear, but noises as of waters falling down sounded about them, and sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances. No power of the fire might give them light, neither could the bright flames of the stars endure to lighten that horrible night, only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself, very dreadful, for being much terrified, they thought the things which they saw to be worse than the sight they saw not. As for the illusions of the art magic, they were put down, and their vaunting and wisdom was reproved with disgrace. For they that promised to drive away terror and troubles from a sick soul were sick themselves of fear, worthy to be laughed at. For though no terrible thing did fear them, yet being scared with peace that pass by and hissing of serpents, they died for fear, denying that they saw the air, which could of no side be avoided. For wickedness condemned by her own witness is very tumorous, and being pressed with conscience, always forecast grievous things. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the helps which reason offers and the expectation from within, being less counts the ignorance more than the cause which brings the torment. But they sleeping the same sleep that night, which was indeed intolerable, and which came upon them out of the bottoms of, of inevitable Sheol, were partly vexed with monstrous apparitions and partly fainted, their heart failing them for a sudden fear and not looking for came upon them. So then whatsoever there fell down was straightly kept, shut up in a prison without iron bars. For whether he were husbandman or shepherd or a laborer in the field, he was overtaken and endured that necessity, which could not be avoided. For they were all bound with one chain of darkness, whether it were a whistling wind or a maledicious mul noise of birds among the spreading branches or a pleasing fall of water running violently or a terrible sound of stones cast down, or a running that could not be seen of skipping beast, or a roaring voice of a most savage wild beast, or a rebounding echo from a hollow mountain. These things made them to swoon for fear, for the whole world shined with clear light, and none were hindered in their labor. Over them only was spread a heavy night, 
an image of the darkness, which should afterwards receive them. But yet were they unto themselves more grievous than the darkness. Nevertheless, your code of shame had a very great light, whose voice they hearing and not seeing their shape, because they also had not suffered the same things, they counted them happy. But, but for that, they did not hurt them now, of whom they had been wrong before. They thanked them and besought them pardon, for that they had been enemies. Instead, whereof you gave them a burning pillar of fire, both to be a guide of the unknown journey and a harmless sun to entertain them honorably. For they were worthy to be deprived of light and impressed in darkness, who had kept your son shut up, by whom the incorrupt light of the Torah was to be given unto the world. And when they had determined to slay the babes of the Kodeshi, one child being cast forth and saved to reprove them, you took away the multitude of their children and destroyed them altogether in a mighty water. Of that night were our fathers certified afore that assuredly knowing unto what oaths they had given credence, they might afterwards be of good cheer. So of your people was accepted both the Yahshua of the righteous and the destruction of the enemies. For wherewith you did punish your adversaries by the same did you glorify us whom you had called for righteous for the righteous children of good men did sacrifice secretly and with one consent made a holy law that the Kodashim should be like partakers of the same good and evil and the fathers now singing out the songs of praise. But on the other side, there sounded an ill according cry of the enemies of lamented noise was carried abroad for children that were bewailed. The master of the servant were punished after one manner, and like as the king, so suffered the common person. So they all together had innumerable dead with one kind of death. Neither were the living sufficient to bury them. For in one moment, the noble offspring of them was destroyed. For whereas they would not believe anything by reason of the enchantments upon the destruction of the firstborn, they acknowledged this people to be the sons of Elohim. For while all things were in quiet silence, and that night was in the midst of their swift course, your almighty word leaped down from heaven out of your royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction and brought your unfeigned commandment as sharp as a sharp sword and standing up filled all things with death and it touched the heaven but it stood upon the earth and suddenly visions of horrible dreams troubled them sore and terrors came upon them unlooked for and one thrown here and another there half dead showed the cause of his death for the dreams that troubled them did foreshow this lest they should perish and not know why they were afflicted yea the tasting of death touched the righteous also and there was a destruction of the multitude in the wilderness but the wrath endured not long for then the blameless man made haste and stood forth to defend them and bringing the shield of his proper ministry even prayer and the appropriation of incense set himself against the wrath and so brought the calamity to an end, declaring that he was your servant. So he overcame the destroyer, not with the strength of body nor force of arms, but with a word subdued him that punished, alleging the oaths and covenants made with the fathers for when the dead were now falling down in heaps, one upon the other, standing between, he stayed the wrath and parted the way to the living. For in the long garment was the whole world, and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the fathers graven. 
and your majesty upon diadem of his head. Unto these the destroyer gave place and was afraid of them, for it was enough that they only tasted of the wrath. As for the wicked, wrath came upon them without mercy unto the end, for he knew before what they would do. How that having given them leave to depart and sent them hastily away, they would repent and pursue them. For while they were yet mourning and making lamentation at the graves of the dead, they added another foolish device and pursued them as fugitives whom they had treated to be gone. For the destiny whereof they were worthy drew them unto the end and made them forget the things that had already happened, that they might fulfill the punishment which was wanting to their torments, and that your people might pass a wonderful way, but they might find a strange death. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew, serving the peculiar commandments that were given unto them that your children might be keeping without hurt. As namely, a cloud shadowing the camp, and where water stood before, dry land appeared, and out of the Red Sea, a way without impediment, impediment, and out of the violent stream, a green field, where through all the people went that were defended that your hand seeing your marvelous strange wonders for they went at large like horses and leap like lambs praising you O yahuwah who had delivered them for they were yet mindful of the things that were done while they sojourned in a strange land how the ground brought forth flies instead of cattle and how the river cast up a multitude of frogs instead of fish but afterwards they saw a new generation of fowls when being led with their appetite, they asked delicate meats for quail came up unto them from the sea for their contentment and punish punishments came upon the sinners not without former signs by the force of the thunder for they suffered justly according to their own wickedness. So much so as they used a more hard and hateful behavior towards strangers. For the Sodomim did not receive those whom they knew not when they came, but those brought friends into bondage that had well deserved of them. And not only so, but perchance some respect shall be had of those because they use strangers not friendly, but those very grievously afflicted them whom they had received with feastings and were already made partakers of the same laws with them therefore even with blindness were these stricken as those who were at the door of the righteous man when being compassed about with horrible great darkness everyone sought the passage of his own door for the elements were changed in themselves by a kind of harmony, like as in psaltery notes change the name of the tune, and yet are always sounds, which may well be perceived by the sight of the things that have been done. For earthly things were turned into watery, and the things that before swam in the water now went upon the ground, the fire, had power in the water, forgetting his own virtue, the water forgot his own quenching nature. On the other side, the flames wasted not the flesh of the corruptible living things, though they walked therein, neither melted they the icy kind of heavenly meat that was of nature apt to melt. For in all things, ya O Yahuwah, you did magnify your people and glorify them, Neither did you lightly regard them, but did assist them in every time and place. <laughs>